in the house and today part one of my new series we're going in depth deep into the Evans Gambit so we are covered for every freaking possibility no there's freaking billions of possibility it's impossible to cover every possibility but I want a really in-depth look at the Evans Gambit because I love the Evans Gambit it's a great gambit and it will give you great attacking chances as white so let's get into it how do we do this part one here let's go e4 is the first move black responds e5 right here the most popular move is going to be knight f3 black responds knight to c6 defending his pawn and we're going to go for the italian game right here and from this position lots of moves are possible we've seen d6 we've seen knight f6 but you'll see this move a lot too and that's what we're looking for and that's bishop out to c5 and this is the position where we have the choice to enter into the Evans Gambit. If you don't want to, you can always play C3 and play a Gioco Piano, but we're going to be more adventurous and we're going to play B4. This is the Evans Gambit. What's the idea? We are trying to divert this bishop from what it's doing to get a lead in development and a lead in an attack, preferably on the F7 square. So here's how it's going to happen. Now we're going to cover the accepted lines and the decline lines so some later videos in this series is going to show when the bishop is scared and runs back because they're like oh god what am i going to do oh my gosh it's a trap it's a trap it's not a trap but it is a good move and more than likely though black is going to take so we're going to start there and after he takes we're going to then play c3 attacking the bishop and the bishop has to go somewhere if he doesn't, we'll take it, and white is winning. So, where is the bishop going to go? Well, it could go to a3. If he does, we take it, and we're winning. So, that's a bad choice. So, it's probably going to either go to a5, c5, d6, e7. Very rarely, but also f8 is an option. So, we're going to look at these moves in this series. But for this first one, we're going to start off with what I think is most common at lower levels. As you could play better players, they're probably more likely to pay, play a5, but I see all the time bishop c5. This is very common, and that's what we're going to look at today. And this was what was played in the first game we're going to show, and this is a game between William Evans and Alexander MacDonald. 1829, the game took place in England. Now, from this position, you want to keep in mind, if in doubt, you're going to probably play d4 bust through the center most of the time that's what we're going to play but when he plays bishop c5 a move you're going to see a lot you probably don't want to immediately he go, went back for where he was and if you were to play this move right away let's just take a look what would happen you could play takes takes back and then he has this check and then you can even play king f1 and that's ugly so more than likely you're going to block but it's just not what we want we want we don't want black any kind of initiative here so that's why I prefer, instead of the immediate d4, when black plays bishop c5, which is what we're looking at today, when black plays bishop c5, after you've played c3, immediately castle. And that's what Evans did. And we're learning from the man, Evans. The Evans Gambit. I think he would know how to play the Evans Gambit because his name is Evans. So, Evans played that move, and he castled. And then we're going to look at three moves today in this first video that come from this position the three most common moves you're gonna see number one the bishop backing up to b6 number two the pawn coming down to d6 and in this game it was knight f6 so let's look at knight f6 seeming like a good move normal move getting ready to castle it's all good in the hood or is it now we play d4 now the bishop is attacked so he obviously can't castle or we'll take his bishop so he's gonna take the pawn that's just what's going to happen most of the time. We're going to take back, and now the bishop has to go somewhere. Now, in the game, the move was bishop back to b6. But I want to see what's going to happen if he does a different move, because there are other options. Obviously, this doesn't look very good, because you can just bring your pawn up. Bad things can happen. So he's probably going to do something else. A move I see all the time, strangely, is bishop down to b4. Like the move that he wanted to play when my king was here, but the king's not here, so it's not check anymore. So this move is not very good. And we can go ahead and play e5 right now, attacking the knight. 
Now, from this position, the knight's either going to have to move or he's going to have to do a counterattack. The counterattack would be d5, which is actually the best move in this position, I think. But more than, like, more than likely, your opponent is not going to make this move. The opponent, your opponent is going to move this knight somewhere. And because he wants to be aggressive, he's going to come down to either g4 or e4. Let's look at g4 first. So your opponent comes down to g4, trying to get closer, 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 better, 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 attack, attack, attack. But now the bishop can, I mean, the queen can come up to b3, and we are attacking right here, and this is really scary for black. Now we already know what he's going to do, right? He's going to castle. But now that he's castled, look at how awkwardly placed the knight is. He doesn't have very many attractive squares to go to. So we're going to attack him, h3, and he's going to go to the one place that's relatively safe, and that's h6. Of course, if you want to grab him right now, you could and mess up his pawn structure for a later attack. But even maybe better is the immediate d5. We're coming right after him. Because notice what this knight is doing. He's protecting that bishop. So as soon as this knight leaves this, this place, whether he wants to retreat or whatever, wherever he goes, this bishop is going to fall. Or this knight's going to fall. If he wants to go in, grab whatever he can, he may do that. He'll If he goes to a5, like I said attacking the queen well we just take go ahead and grab that bishop bishop is going to be free a lot of players do this because they see oh i got to move my knight somewhere uh, oh why not attack the queen bye bye bishop so more than likely they're going to grab what they can they're going to come over here snag something well we can just take that back white is completely winning here up a piece he has to be careful about this bishop pretty much going to lose the freaking game let's back up a little bit now to this point Instead, let's take a look at the counterattack here. So instead of moving the knight down to g4, he decides he's going to play d5. Okay, this is a very similar line to the, the game we're going to get back to in a minute. You simply take the knight, he's going to take your bishop, and you're going to take this pawn right here. More than likely, he's going to go ahead and he needs to do something about this problem, so he's going to move this rook and attack the pawn. Now we can go ahead from here. We have lots of options in this particular position can keep on going forward always look at knights that can be attacked by pawns the Evans gambit always leads to that and here's the, that same situation the knight needs to move so maybe he'll go to e7 but look at this move here now we have a perfect queen check right here we're gonna pick up this uh, this bishop no matter what he does Queen's probably gonna block but now the bishop falls I mean lots of possibilities here black needs to be very careful Let's set back up and get to the game. And let's just go through some of the early moves once again, just to kind of recap. So, once again, e4, your opponent copies. Knight comes out to f3. Knight comes out to c6. Bishop, bishop, b4. He accepts. We take, and we're looking at when he backs up here to c5. And in this position, we are going to castle. Okay, and in this particular game, the first thing we're looking at is knight coming out to f6. And now, we can play this move. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and we already looked at what happens if he goes down to b4 like a weirdo. So we're going to look at the real game where he comes up to b6. And this was played in the game we are talking about. Okay, now the key move here, e5. We're going to attack this knight. Again, the knight has to go somewhere. It's just similar to the position we just saw. The knight has to go somewhere or he has to counterattack. Once again, we'll look at knight g4. This time, we can actually play our bishop out to g5 attacking the queen. And what is he going to do about it? More than likely, he's going to play this move. Just grab that real quick. And after he grabs it, we now have an open e-file. Rook check. He doesn't want to move the king. He's going to look around and see what he can do. What can I do? Oh, I can block with the knight. So that's what he's going to do. But now, we bring our other knight out. It's all about bringing pieces into the game. He's going to be like, uh oh, your bishop's hanging. But he's in big trouble because after knight comes up here to d5, what is he going to do about this problem here? Nothing he can do about it. He is in big trouble. Black is completely losing here. Just for example, if he tries to play c6, we can go ahead and take here. As you can see, he doesn't want to lose his queen, but there's really, there's discovered attacks. He is in deep trouble. Maybe he'll just take. This queen is lost. There's really nothing he can do. Why not just take what you can? Because it is going to happen anyway. This queen is a goner. So let's back up a little bit. That's what happens when the knight 
gets scared and comes down to g4. What about if the knight comes to e4? We haven't really looked at that. Well, queen e2 attacks it. He's like, uh oh, uh, don't look like I have anywhere good to go to. Where is this knight gonna go? He's gonna go nowhere. So he needs to be defended. More than likely, they're gonna play d5. But we can just take that en passant, en passant. And then what's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna try to protect it still with this move. But there's only so much he can do. Knight can come over here to d2. Bishop, I mean knight b, d2. And things are all bad. There's nothing he can do to protect this knight any further. He'll probably just take what he can. But then we'll just take here. And as you can see, this game is soon to be over. And that's why in the game, it's best to counterattack for black. And that's what was done. D5 was done. Okay. Just like before, we're going to take it. He's going to take it. In this position, we don't need to take. You can't take here. You can absolutely do that. But first, we're going to throw in this check instead. We're going to throw in this check, E1 check. Rook E1 check. Well, what's he going to do? The king has to move, right? Well, a lot of players don't want to move their king if they don't have to. He's still dead set on castling, so he blocks here with the bishop. It looks like a decent idea. But now we can take here, and we're just going to mess up this whole structure anyway. And the rook is going to have to move. He can't castle over here anyway. And then we're going to play bishop out to g5, attacking the queen. What is the queen to do? If he tries to do this, it doesn't really help. Because now, as you can see, that was not a good idea by black. So instead, he needs to move his queen. But after his queen goes somewhere, say d7, d5 is the move, attacking both these pieces. He's got to do something here, but there's really nothing he can do because this bishop is pinned. And obviously, he's not going to take with the queen, so he's about to lose a piece. He'll probably take what he can over here, grab this pawn, and that's the thing. I mean, he's just he's in deep, deep trouble. So back to the position where black is in check here. We played rook over to e1 we haven't taken here on g7 yet so black instead of blocking with the bishop he just moves to f8 and that's what happened in the game now let's just check out the rest of the game because it's unlikely that you'll ever arise at this exact position there's still the basic ideas are here what are you going to do in this position always look at your other bishop come out to a3 with check king has to go to g8 he's not going to block with anything after the king goes over there d5 Continue to attack. Look for things to attack. Like I said, if a pawn can jump forward, attack a knight, that's always good, especially if that knight pawn cannot be taken, like the case is here. Knight has to move. Goes over to a5. That's what happened in the game. And then bishop up to e7, attacking the queen. So the queen is in trouble. Queen has to move. Queen d7. And now, finally, we have a capture here. King captures back, and now the king is exposed. White trying to get the queen over here plays queen to d2 because he wants to play queen g5. Black says no, 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 plays queen g4. But now queen c3, check. And this game is going to be over very quickly. King comes up to g8. And there is a mate in three. Pause video. I'll take a second for you to look at this position. See if you can find checkmate in three moves. Very lovely checkmate. And what it is here, hopefully you've paused the video, hopefully you've checked it out, hopefully you've taken a few moments. No? Okay, here we go. Queen takes rook on h8. Well, there's only one move. The king has to take, but now we have bishop f6 check. And no matter what, this rook is coming to e8 with check. If king g8, it's mate. If he tries to block, it's still mate because, which is this is what happened in the game, by the way, because this queen is pinned and that's the ball game so a very lovely game there and that is the first game we're gonna look at here in this series so let's jump to uh, the second game for this first video and it goes like this this game is between Stefan Hamill and Adolf Anderson 1857 Manchester England and once again Let's go through the opening moves. e4, e5, knight comes out to f3, knight comes out to c6, bishop is going to end up on c4, and then bishop c5, attack immediately. 
and we're looking at the accepted line, C3, and we're looking at back to C5 where he was before, and we're not going to play D4 right away, we're going to castle. And in the last game, we looked at the knight coming out to F6, but in this game, the move played was bishop back to B6. So what to do then? Well, we're still going to go ahead and play D4. Takes, takes. That seems to happen almost 95 to 100% of my games. They just take, take. So it's kind of what I'm showing here. The next move is D6. This could transpose. He could have played D6 first. Just kind of get familiar with the positions, though. Take your time. And in a position like this, what is a move that I keep on saying to look for? Pawn attacking a knight. A pawn that can't be taken attacks a knight. And it, this is what happened. And in this particular case, the knight decided to go over to e7. So knight c, e7, could have played e5, a5, which I think is probably a better option. You're attacking this bishop right away. In, in a case like this, just move your bishop somewhere else. Maybe he develops his other knight. You develop your knight. Now he does have a chance to castle, but I think that white is doing just fine here. This is a pretty even game, and black did very well by attacking that bishop. That's one of the keys that black has, this annoying move getting this knight over here to a5. But a lot of opponents don't want to do that because they know knights on the rim are dim. They went to chess class, so they'll play knight c e7 as played in the game. So what happens if knight c e7? Well, the move played here was surprising. White plays e5. E5, a very strong move, actually. He's just, just keep moving forward, keep pushing forward. In this game, Black came out and played F4, but you're going to often see the capture. And if he does capture, well, you capture back. And more than likely, he'll play Knight F6, getting ready to castle. And there is a move that I really like in this position, which I've been in several times. Let me know how it takes your fancy. Bam! Knight takes F7. Oh my goodness, I've gotten into his territory. I'm forking these two pieces. King has no choice. He will take. And now we have the move d6 check. And you know black is worried. Black is shaking in his freaking boots right now. So he has to go somewhere. More than likely he's going to move back. He knows going forward is not a good idea. So let's check out what if he goes to f8. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, he is in big freaking trouble now. D takes, E7 check. Okay, Queen takes, Bishop A3, this looks really horrible for Black, right? Oh, but he has a saving move. Ah, C5, I'm okay, right? Bam, what are you going to do now? Queen attacked, Queen has to move. Oh, Queen moves, C7. Bring out our Knight, Black is absolutely getting crushed here. Look at this king, totally exposed. All your pieces are very active. They are ready to rock and roll. Maybe he sees this move, he attacks the queen. Queen just goes over to b3, and black is not going to survive very long. So let's back up a little bit to the point. Well, let's back up here. Let's just back up a little bit here to early position. Remember now. Okay. This is after we've castled early in the game and he backs up to b uh, bishop backs up to b6 now we play d4 fighting for the center there is a trade of pawns and now we're going to look at the move d6 and we're going to play d5 attacking this knight we're looking at knight backing up here and e5 we're going to keep on going in this particular pos position we're looking at takes that's not what happened in the game but we're going to look at what happens if he takes because you're going to see that more often than not we can go ahead and take back, and he's almost always going to bring this knight out because he's getting ready. He's like, I need to castle. We're not going to let him castle. Castling, no, 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 no. I love this move. Knight, bam. Knight takes f6. King takes. Check here. We're going to end up getting the piece back. And we looked at what happens if the king goes back to f8. He's going to be in big trouble after d takes e7. Check. So probably a better idea for him, a little safer idea for him, is going to be, well, a lot safer idea for him is going to be going to e8. Well, we're still going to get our knight back. Queen's going to come down here. He's probably going to trade queens. Take here. Now, right here, king might decide, oh, better take that pawn. But after knight c3, black is going to be the one in trouble here because 
his king. Look at his king. Completely naked out here. And if the bishop tries to attack the rook, we can put this check in. Bishop can come out. This, this is a very common move in the Evans gambit. Always think bishop a3. Try to find the right times to play it. He'll block with c5, but now this rook can get out of harm's way and come over here and check the king. This king is going down. All white's pieces are getting into the game. He is in big trouble. We can get rid of that bishop any time, bring another rook over. I mean, lots of possibilities here. Black is getting completely spanked. So let's back up now that we saw a couple of those possibilities. We're going to go back to the game. And in the game, the pawn did not take after we played e5. Instead, he decided to come down with bishop g4, pinning down the knight. A little counter move, thinking, hey, I'm going to grab some initiative, but some initiative. But look here. Oh boy, this is the move right here. Queen a4 check. Black is in trouble. Let's check out what happened after this. Block and bam. Bishop b5. Things look horrible. He has to play c6. And instead of taking a brilliant move here, e6 was played. So after e6, the queen is attacked. Just creating threats and forcing black to do something about it. So he takes. Why not just try to take with the pawn? Well, his bishop's attacked anyway. So his bishop's going down regardless. So he has to do something. He can't move the bishop because then the queen will fall. So he decides, well, might as well play this move. And after that move, d takes e6, f takes e6, and then the bishop just comes down to d3, getting into safety, and white is looking really good in this position. Black decided, well, I'll bring my knight out to f6 develop. Knight bd2 was played and then black played e5. So this is a position you may never reach but it's still interesting to check out the rest of this game because it is really crazy stuff. So from this position it was bishop a3. Again that move very common. Knight comes over to g6 and now knight c4 is played attacking this bishop. Well, he has to decide, can he hold on, should he hold on to the bishop? Should he move the bishop? He decided he better move the bishop. So he moves to b7 and then rook a to b1. And he is coming in for the attack. b5 is played. Look perfect, right? This looks perfect. Both Your opponent's going to play this move in a position like this. So what is the situation here? Let's take a look at white. What should white do here? Any ideas? What he might have done? Bam, rook, B, rook takes b8. Holy freaking cow. Well, more than likely, c takes b5 is coming. Problem now is, he looked through forward to this. Check right here. Computer recommends bishop taking d6. But even if you do that, things are not going to go well because look at this move right here. This queen is going to fall. And he saw that, and that's why he decided, well, I better move my king instead. He moved his king to d8. But from here, after the bishop takes on b5, he just went ahead and threw in the towel. This is completely winning for white. Black is going to be checkmated very, very shortly. It all comes back to this move. Now, let's, let's jump back to this position. I'm just curious. Real quick, if we look at this position, how can we see rook takes b5 is a good move? It's definitely a move to consider. We see this bishop right here wants to get here, wants to pin down this queen, wants to win the queen. We're thinking, okay... Rook takes b5. If he takes, then we come up here with check. Queen can't take because this bishop is on here. So what's going to happen is rook is going to take. Pawn is going to take. I'm going to come up here with check. If he takes with the bishop, I'm going to come up here and win the queen. I mean, it's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty deep thought process, but definitely can be done. So this is a, was a key position in this game. Let's move on, though, to the last game in our first video. Okay, for the last game, this is a game a little more modern relative to the other games we've been looking at. This was with the white pieces, Adalto da Nobrega, against the black pieces, Maximo Valerio Macedo, 1972, Brazil. So it ended up in the exact same position as the previous game, but a little different move order, and there can be actually different, uh, several different move orders to get to this position. And here's a easy way we could end up in that position. Normal moves here, getting into the Evans Gambit. Black comes over here and we go over this. 
he takes, play this move, he moves back, that's what we're looking at today, castle, and then previously we've looked at knight down here, last game we looked at the bishop coming back here, but it also could have been d6 first, because then after this move and then the trade of pawns and the bishop backs up, you can see that it's in the exact same position. This is the same position as last game, and do you remember what we played in this position last game? Do you remember what we played in this position last game? We played d5. And the knight jumped over here. We also looked at what we could do if the knight jumped over here. But this particular game, the knight jumped down here, which is another possibility we need to look at. Knight to e5. What to do? Well, my favorite idea is to go ahead and grab that. And after he recaptures, then we can finketo this bishop to b2 attacking the pawn. And things are, are actually looking nice for white. Now, in the game that we're looking at, black decided he was going to play his queen over to d6. But I want to know what if we see a more, probably a more common idea is just bring the knight out and getting ready to castle. This happened in a, another game which took place in 1859 in Paris. It was Paul Morphy with the white pieces, the great Paul Morphy against O. Mongredien. Mongredien. And this was a position that was reached in that particular game where black was getting ready to castle. Morphy comes with knight over here to d2 and then black did indeed castle. Well, there's a pawn hanging. Why not grab it? Morphy did that. Rook came over to e8 attacking the bishop. So the bishop just went ahead and grabbed this. There was a trade. Queen comes out and he made a strange move in this position. King h1. So whenever this position is reached, I just do what Morphy would do and I played king h1. And here, black made a mistake. And I want to see if, can you find out the best move in this position after this bishop came over here trying to attack and harass my poor little horsey. What's the move? Queen a4. Morphe found it. And what's the idea? You're threatening something known as checkmate. And the only way black can avoid checkmate is by giving up his bishop. So, so that's just something you can look out for. Obviously, he may not play that move, but even if he doesn't, this position, white is okay right here, holding the position. Okay, back to this game. Uh, we're back to the position where the knight decided to come over to e5. Knight takes. Pawn is going to go ahead and take. What do we do in this position? We think head of the bishop to b2. This is a pretty good position for white. Lots of attacking chances. In the game, it was queen to d6. Knight comes to d2 anyway. This is a move to look for in this position. Knight d2. Okay, black went ahead and decided to go bishop d4 and at least oppose this guy here. Now, the question is, do I have to do something about this right away? White decided no, he doesn't. Check. So you don't have to deal with this right away. Always see, instead of dealing with the immediate threat, can I make a threat myself? And in the Evans Gambit, that's what it's all about. Forget his threats. He has no threats. We have all the momentum here. We have all the attacking chances. And right here, you know he's going to play c6. And again, the instinct is, okay, we need to do something about this. We got this situation. We got this situation. But what's the one piece that black will have to do something about? You guessed it, the queen. Knight c4. That's why I love this game. White keeps finding attacks even though he's getting attacked all over the place. We got an attack here. We got an attack here. What are you going to do, black? Take my bishops if you want them. I got your queen. So he's obviously going to move. The queen moves to f6. Okay. So white thinks about it for a minute, and he decides to go ahead and grab the bishop. So he's trading bishops. Now, in this position, notice that black is attacking both bishops. Instinctually, a lot of players would just take back what was taken, which was what happened in the game. But let's take a look at what if black said, hey, you, you think I'm going to take that? Well, what if I take this? Because there is something to it. He's also attacking your knight. So it could happen. But there is something to be done in this position. First of all, again, Threats, threats, threats. We could take that pawn. He cannot take this knight because we will take his queen. His queen is attacked again. So the queen decides he better move. He may come down here to g5, for instance, getting out of harm's way. But now the knight can come up here with check. There's nothing the king can do. He has to move. There's no blocks or anything like that, obviously. If with a knight check, he can't take the knight. So he moves. He moves the king, he moves the king to f8. 
queen can jump into d4. This is massive. This is incredible. He is getting absolutely crushed here. Oh, he's going to try for his little checkmate. We see this all the time. And please always try when you in this position, which we all get in, try not to play g3 if you can help it and let him take your rook. And in this position, there's a simple way to avoid that with the simple, sim, with the simple move, bishop to g3. Black is getting crushed. Black is going to lose this game. So let's back the freak up. And that's why in this position right here, after we've checked, he played this move. We attack the queen. What is going on here? The queen has to move. As we know, the queen in this, in this game, he moved to f6. And then the bishop decided to take here. And if he takes here, we saw what was going to happen. We can attack the queen. So that's why he decided to take here. What are we going to do? We're going to attack the queen anyway. e5. What a great move. That's why I love this game. He just keeps finding attacks. He keeps on. He's just not giving black any chance to breathe. The queen says, oh my gosh, where am I going to go now? g6. And now d takes c6 finally. The king knows he's in trouble. The king decides he's going to go to f8, where it's a little more, he thinks, safe. But now queen comes up. d4. Black says, you know what? Forget this. I'm done. And resigns. Just a crushing game. Evans Gambit. Lots of attacking chances. This is just part one of a, I don't know how many part series, at least five parts in this series. I'll let you know when it's over. I'm going to keep them coming because the Evans Gambit is the freaking bomb. I'm Crazy Crab. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.